Hi, I'm Andrew with Infinity Cutting Tools. Boxes are one of the most common projects that woodworkers undertake in their shop, and with the new Infinity Tapered Dovetail Spline System, you can add strength and beautiful decorative details to these very common projects. Let's take a closer look at this new system, and I'll show you how I used it here in our shop to make all of these boxes. The Infinity Tapered Dovetail Spline System produces a unique, tapered groove and spline to make beautiful and strong joints. The system consists of both a router jig and a table saw sled that make both the grooves and the spline. So this is a complete joinery system. Let's go ahead and take a closer look and I'll show you how each of these components work and how easy they are to use. The first piece of this system is the router jig. This jig comes in two different sizes, a 12 inch and an 18 inch. The 12 inch is great for smaller projects like jewelry boxes and humidors and is compatible with router bits up to 5 eighths of an inch in diameter. The 18 inch jig is compatible with bits up to a full one inch in diameter and is great for larger projects like blanket chests, but can also be used on large and small projects to make unique joints like nested dovetails. The second main piece of the system is the spline sled. It is compatible with both right and left tilt table saws and is used to make the unique tapered splines to work in the grooves made with the dovetail jig. Now before we can use the tapered dovetail spline system, we need to have a completed box. For hardwood boxes, I like to use a lock miter joint. This is a very strong joint that helps eliminate slipping when gluing the miter together. The same goes for plywood boxes, I like to use a lapped miter router bit set. This has a stronger profile for this multi-ply material and also improves glue up, making for very simple and easy to assemble joints. If you're a traditionalist and like to use a standard 45 degree joint, I recommend a 45 degree chamfer router bit. This, for me, helps to make the joint more simple to cut than at the table saw and makes for a glue ready surface. The first step in using this system is to locate the router jig on the, our project. I like to mark the center line of each spline and use the V-notch in the jig to locate to make sure I get my splines exactly where I want them. To hold the jig in place, I like to use some double-sided tape and if possible, I'll throw a couple of clamps on there just to make the jig extra secure. For smaller projects, I like to use the jig at the router table to do my routing, but for larger projects that are a little bit unwieldy, I like to use a handheld router to do my routing so that I don't have to move the project around. The router jig is guided by a Porter Cable style brass guide bushing. Be sure that your router table or handheld router is compatible with this style of bushing in order to be able to use the jig. Just so you can see how this system works, we follow the bushing with the jig to make the groove that our spline will fit into. When I'm working with splinter prone material like plywood, I like to use some painter's tape and tape the edge of my project. The tape will help support the material as the router bit cuts it and greatly reduces the effects of tear out. I just want to make sure that my tape is short enough that when I install my jig, I can still see my center marks. The tapered spline sled is CNC machined and set up to create the perfect taper for our splines to match perfectly with the groove we made with the router jig. 
the miter bar on this sled is set at the exact correct angle to make the perfect taper down the length of our spline. This is what allows our joint to come together tightly and lock in place. We set the saw blade to the angle to match the dovetail bit that we used with the jig, and we also use the sled to create the unique taper down the length of the spline so that the joint fits perfectly together. To get set up, I need to first raise my blade to be able to cut through both the sled and through my blank of material that I'm going to make my splines from. Then I need to tilt the blade to match the angle of my dovetail bit. In my case, this is 14 degrees, so I'll tilt my blade to 14 degrees. Then I can make a zero clearance cut in my sled if I haven't already made one, and I'm ready to make my splines. I like to make my splines from a blank that's about two to three inches long and eight inches wide. The blank's thickness is dictated by the router bit used to make the groove. I want to make sure that my blank is at least as thick as the cutting height of the router bit. I also want to ensure that the grain orientation in my blank is running in the short direction. This ensures that my spline will be as strong as possible. The first step in making our spline is to slide it into the sled to just cut the very edge of the blank so that we create the correct angles on the workpiece. To finish the spline, we need to set our stop block to roughly the correct width for our spline, flip our spline blank over, and slide it against the stop, make our cut, and we have a finished spline. Then we can test the spline on our project to see if we need to make any fine tuning adjustments to its width. When I test my spline, I find it's just a little bit too fat, so I'll make a minor adjustment to the stop block on my sled. Now that I know my splines will fit, I can go ahead and cut the rest of the splines for my project. To install the splines, I just add a little bit of glue, spread it around, and slide the splines in place. They'll only slide in one way because they're tapered, and then I give them a tap with a mallet just to lock them down. After the splines are glued in place, it's time to trim the waste. I like to remove the bulk of the waste at the table saw first. To do this, I use a three quarter inch spacer to elevate the box to clear the overhanging splines and space the edge of the box about 1 16th of an inch to 1 8th of an inch away from the blade. This avoids damaging the box and we can flush trim the splines at the router table later. The final step is to trim the splines flush to the sides of the box. To do this, I like to use a large diameter flush trim router bit. The large diameter paired with the nice shear angle on the cutters helps reduce the chance of tear out as we trim the last little bit of material from our splines. I also rest the project on a piece of quarter inch plywood just to space the project up so that we don't have any tilt to the box. If all you're looking for is a simple spline joint like this one, you're ready for sanding and finishing. 
If you want to add more detail to your project, like I've done on this box, you can create nested dovetails by reinstalling the 18 inch jig using the lines you used previously to locate the jig, then using a smaller dovetail bit, route another set of spline grooves through the middle of the first set of splines. Then you can make more splines at the table saw, glue them in place, trim them flush, and you'll have a beautiful nested dovetail joint. Hopefully you can see just how easy it is to get great results with the Infinity Tapered Dovetail Spline System. Be sure to check out our website for great money-saving packages so that you can use this system in your shop. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our blog for more great information on the tools we use and the projects we make here in the Infinity Tools shop. Also, check out our Facebook page and give us a like to stay up to date on what's going on here at Infinity.